First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for the invitation to participate in the fourth international conference of orthopedics and rheumatology. The issue uh, that I will address relates to the use of ultrasound for the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome is the most common compressive neuropathy. It's initially characterized by pain and sensitivity changes in the medial nerve territory. In advanced stages, weakness and uh, atrophy of the thinner muscles are present. Diagnosis is based on the clinical examination, aided by complementary exams, such as electromyography, and more recently, by ultrasound. According to some recent uh, articles, ultrasound can be uh, used as a screening test, reducing the cost of diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome. However, in order to obtain good results, the exam must be performed by a trained radiologist using suitable equipment. Ultrasound equipment must have linear transducers um, with a frequency of uh, 12 to 18 megahertz that ensure the evaluation of small structures in a high resolution. Basically, what we assess by ultrasound in the carpal tunnel syndrome are the changes of the medial nerve which makes it crucial to understand the anatomy of the peripheral nerve. Peripheral nerves are composed of the fibers and the supporting tissue. Neural fibers come together to form the fascicles that are separated by the perineum, composed by collagen and the vascular structures whose main function it's, it is to promote their nutrition. In a ultrasound on the axial plane, neural fascicles are seen as hypoechoic rounded images surrounded by the perineum. These are represented by hyperechoic linear, linear images, giving the nerve a bunch of grapes or a honeycomb-like appearance. On the longitudinal plane, the neural fascicles uh, appear as parallel tubular images, giving a fascicular aspect to the nerve, unlike the flexor tendons that show a fibular structure. The medial nerve is assessed through its path inside the carpal tunnel. In the proximal region where the scaphoid and pisiform are seen, the medial nerve appears with an uh, oval shape. In the distal region where the trapezium and uh, the hamate bones are identified, the nerve presents as more tapered. In the carpal tunnel syndrome, qualitative and quantitative changes of the medial nerve are evaluated. In the qualitative exam, three characteristics of the nerve are checked. The shape, the echogenicity, and the structure. The most common abnormality of the medial nerve is the reducing its echogenicity, becoming darker. This change is due to the presence of edema that is seen um, uh, close to the compressed segment of the nerve. Depending on the intensity of edema, the usual nerve fascicular appearance 
may be altered. In this image, the perineum cannot be identified. The honeycomb-like appearance has disappeared. The nerve is completely hypoechoic. Sometimes, nerve fascicles are replaced by areas of fibrosis and demyelination, represented by hyperechoic uh, uh, images poorly defined on the nerve as in this case. The shape of the medial nerve is altered due to uh, intraneural edema and the compression determined by the retinaculum. These changes may lead to the nerve looking like an hourglass. This image represents the carpal tunnel on the longitudinal plane. The entry and the exit point uh, of the medial nerve in the carpal tunnel are thicker than the nerve segment inside the tunnel, thus resembling an hourglass form. On the axial plane, the nerve is swollen and uh, hypoechoic in the proximal carpal tunnel, unlike the distal region where it is uh, compressed and uh, hyperechoic. As regards the quantitative evaluation, the first paper mentioning the use of ultrasound in patients with carpal tunnel syndrome was published by Buschberger et al. in 1991. Three diagnostic criteria were proposed an increase in cross-sectional area of the medial nerve proximal to the compression, thinning of the medial nerve at the site of the compression, measured by the ratio of two diameters of the nerve, a bulging of the flexor retinaculum. Of the three criteria, the increase in cross-sectional area of the medial nerve proved to be uh, the most reproducible according to studies done after this report. The measurement of the area must be made where it is greater. Usually, this point is located in the carpal tunnel entrance or in the proximal carpal tunnel. The ideal cutoff of the cross-sectional area of the medial nerve to differentiate individuals without the disease from those with carpal tunnel syndrome is controversial. According to recent reports in ultrasonography studies, the best cutoff value of the medial nerve area is between 9 and 11 square millimeters. In our institution, we use a cutoff value of 10 square millimeters, based on our studies published in uh, 2008. Uh, medial nerve cross-sectional area of 10 square millimeters had a, sensi had a sensitivity of 85%, specificity of 92%, and accuracy of 89%. The result was better than observed in the meta-analysis studies using cutoff value between 9 and 11 square millimeters. Some radiologists, instead of performing a single measurement, prefer to compare the areas of the medial nerve made at two points in the carpal tunnel and uh, near the proximal third of the pronator quadratus muscle. The nerve is considered to be thickened when the difference between the areas is greater than two square millimeters. In this example, the medial nerve in the carpal tunnel is thicker when compared to the medial nerve in the forearm. 
uh, this uh, apparent increase in the nerve size was confirmed by the measurement of the difference between the areas uh, whose value was 8 square millimeters. Patients uh, with carpal tunnel syndrome may also have their symptoms related to the involvement of the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve, occurring in uh, up to 50% of patients. This small nerve is the last collateral branch of the median nerve in the distal uh, forearm. Despite its small size, it's of great clinical importance. It passes radially to the median nerve below the antibrachial fascia. Uh, close to the wrist, it enters a tunnel formed by superficial and deep layers of antibrachial fascia. At uh, the exit point, uh, uh, at the, the exit of the tunnel, the branch pierces the fascia, uh, usually near the palmar crease of the wrist, reaching the subcutaneous tissue. From this point, it uh, crosses the tubercle of scaphoid to innervate the skin uh, of the thinner eminence and uh, the proximal region of the hand. In non-operated patients, there are two hypotheses that attempt to explain the nerve involvement. Compression related to its passage in the tunnel formed by the superficial and deep layer, layers of the antibrachial fascia, and uh, stretching as a consequence of reduced mobility of the medial nerve within the carpal tunnel. We must also consider the patients undergoing carpal tunnel surgery who remain with pain and paresthesia. These symptoms after the surgical procedure could be related not only to an incomplete section of the flexor retinaculum or fibrosis adhesion to the medial nerve, but also the compression or injury of the palmar cutaneal branch. In an ultrasound on the axial plane, the nerve is visualized uh, uh, visualized as a hypoechoic uh, rounded fascicle with a diameter of 0 0.8 to 1.0 millimeters between the median nerve and the uh, flexor carpi radialis tendon. This patient had a history of carpal tunnel syndrome. The median nerve was thickened and uh, hypoechoic. The palmar cutaneous branch showed a normal appearance. In this other case, besides the changes uh, observed in the median nerve, we notice a great focal thickening of the palmar cutaneous branch. In both axial and the longitudinal planes, of the volar aspect of the wrist. Besides assisting in the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome, ultrasonography has also been used in cases of a failure in surgical treatment. In these cases, fi fibrosis at the surgical site uh, may determine adhesion or even new compression on the medial nerve. In these images, fibrosis are seen as hypoechoic nodules adhered to the median nerve. In another patient, fibrosis compresses the nerve, which appears hypoechoic and tapered. In this case, seven months after the surgery, the patient 
continuous with paresthesia and the, in the thinner region. In uh, ultrasound, in the distal uh, region of the forearm, the power cutaneous branch uh, appears with its usual aspect, surrounded, surrounded by uh, fat tissue. In the proximal carpal tunnel, the contours of the nerve is blurred due to fibrosis around it, responsible for maintaining the symptoms of the patient. So, in conclusion, ultrasonography, despite not predicting severity, can be useful as a screening test by reducing the cost of diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome, therefore avoiding the use of electromyography in many cases. We have also observed that ultrasound has shown to be valuable in determining the cause in many cases of operate patients with poor results, especially when fibrosis is present. Thank you very much.